They waited till the election. They waited. And I probably have another one. They say there's a young woman, uh, a young racist in Atlanta. Say racist. And they say, I guess, they say that she was after a certain gang, and she ended up having an affair with the head of the gang or a gang member. And this is a person that wants to indict me. She's got a lot of problems, but she wants to indict me to try and run for some other office. Uh, what's going on in this country is uh, — and by the way, wants to indict me for a perfect phone call. This was even better than my perfect call with Ukraine. Remember that call? That was a perfect call. This one's better. This one is more perfect. I challenge the election in Georgia, which I have every right to do. And they want to indict me because I challenged the election. So does that mean that Hillary Clinton, who challenged the election, does that mean that Stacey Abrams and all of the other, virtually every Democrat challenges the election? Does that mean, or they do the slate of electors? This has been going on since Thomas Jefferson. He wanted to say, but they don't call. They use my word. They took it and they said fake. Several days later. Every individual charged in the indictment is charged with one count of violating Georgia's Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act through participation in a criminal enterprise in Fulton County, Georgia, and elsewhere to accomplish the illegal goal of allowing Donald J. Trump to seize the presidential term of office beginning on January 20th, 21. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the boost in the polls that Democrats have handed former President Donald J. Trump once again as Trump is now facing his fourth indictment because Democrats quite simply just want to interfere in the 2024 election. They want to rig it uh, against the Republicans and Trump. And this is why they're coming out to Trump. They don't want him to win. This is what it is about because it is not a crime to challenge the outcome of elections. If this was the case, then Stacey Abrams and Hillary Clinton and other Democrats would be doing time behind bars. However, that's not the case because challenging an election is not a crime and the woke da out of fulton county knows that the reason why she's doing this she's bringing this racketeering case against trump which is the main charge here is because she cannot get an actual or a simple conspiracy charge against trump which is why she is stretching legally here to try to bring this racketeering case against trump which basically is a statue that is used to take down mob bosses and gang members right right now currently uh this same da is going out the young thug and ysl uh for racketeering and allegedly according to some people you know this da is sleeping around with gang members who knows wouldn't be surprised at this point but i'm actually gonna let uh mr andrew mccarthy who is a fellow at the national review explain to you guys why this case is weak and why she's actually going for these racketeering charges in the first place because again this da knows that she doesn't really have a case and that this is all being done for political gain take a look yeah i really think that it's a mistake for her to have brought a rico case i know she says she has experience in these prosecutions i don't think this is a well thought out rico uh, and i think in a nutshell you know the problem that she has is the main thing that was the objective of the people that she has tried to cast as a racketeering enterprise was to retain Trump in office. So that was like a sort of a temporally fleeting objective. It wasn't a money generating thing. Like generally speaking in the kind of organized crime uh, entities that, that we're talking about, the reason that you have RICO is because there's an economic purpose to it. They generate money through the commission of a series of crimes, et cetera. Here, the, the objective here was not to be a member of a group like it is in a mafia case where, you know, the objective is to be a member of the mafia family and to generate income through its activities. Here, the objective was a lawful one, which they may have used unlawful means occasionally to try to get over the finish line, which was to retain Trump in power. But that's not the kind of glue that would keep a racketeering organization together. Hmm. So I, I just think that she's groping for 
a crime. What she, what she really needs is a simple conspiracy that has a simple objective. A, a conspiracy is simply an agreement by two or more people to violate another law, you know, a, a, some criminal law. And if retaining Trump in office was a crime, then she'd have an easy, simple, straight line conspiracy. She really doesn't have that because the objective is not illegal, even if some of the means they, uh, they use to try to obtain the objective may have been. Yeah. So again, like I told you guys, um, she really has nothing. Okay. She has nothing, but this is still a big deal because unlike the other cases, the federal charges, uh, this is not an easy one for Trump to get out of, even if he is elected president, because it is the state bringing this case against him. He can't just pardon himself like he could uh, with uh, the case from Jack Smith uh, involving, you know, the election or whatever. He can't just do that. OK. And again, this is the big one. This is the one that Democrats really want. But again, this prosecution in my opinion obviously is rigged we know it's rigged because they uh filed the charges before the grand jury was even finished deliberating and deciding whether or not charges would be filed in the first place and when they got caught doing this basically rigging the process um the explanation from the woke da was less than satisfactory the big question tonight doug thank you so much and within the past hour we actually got a statement from the fulton county clerk of courts office about a document that was leaked by a, a certain news outlet claiming to list 13 potential charges against former president trump 11 11 investigator zach merchant digging to the bottom of this hey zach Hey guys, yeah, you're right. Now, around noon, Reuters reported that a document was briefly posted listing out a RICO charge as well as multiple charges for false statements and forgery tied to former President Donald Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election results here in Georgia. It should be noted that what was shared online matches the formatting and wording of other Fulton County court records typically available online, but we wanna stress this, we just got word from the clerk's office calling that document, quote, fictitious. The statement goes on to say that documents that do not bear an official case number, filing date, the name of the clerk of courts are not official filings and should not be treated as such. Now, as part of the legal process, it's not unusual for the DA's office to work with the clerk to get all of the charging documents ready prior to any potential indictment. But if nothing else, this gives us yet another indication that the DA may be anticipating a potential indictment against the former president. All right, Zach, thank you so much for that update. Maybe according to the Fulton County Clerk's Office that was circulated online with charges against former President Donald Trump, those, that fictitious document uh, matched exactly the charges that we now see in this indictment. Can you tell us more about that document leak? Uh, because now you have the former president's lawyers who are saying this is emblematic of a serious problem with your office. No, I can't tell you anything about um, what you refer to. What I can tell you is that we had a grand jury here in Fulton County. They deliberated till almost eight o'clock, if not right after eight o'clock. An indictment was returned. It was true billed and you now have an indictment. Um, I am not an expert on clerks duties um, or even administrative duties. I wouldn't know how to work that system. And so I'm not going to speculate. Next question. Yeah. So what you have there is the standard non-answer that we usually get from affirmative action hires uh, when they get caught up in their own corruption, right? She doesn't have an answer. The document is fictitious. We don't know why this happened. Even though, again, th this document outlined the charges that would eventually be bought, like officially bought against Trump. Um, you know, after the grand jury deliberated and decided again, it's just funny how that works. Okay. I mean, clearly this process is rigged. I mean, if you listen to CNN, uh, talk about it and some of the guests they bought on, they're basically saying the quiet part out loud about why this is all happening, uh, which is basically to keep Trump from running. And also on top of that, the process in and of itself in regards to the trial, and dealing with the judge and the jury, all that is going to be rigged as well, too, because apparently Trump uh, has a hard time <laughs> dealing with black women. Again, according to CNN. It feels different. Uh, you know what? Donald Trump did his, did his most damage in Georgia. Uh, he sucked the soul out of the Republican Party here. Uh, he sucked the morality out of the Republican Party, the fiscal responsibility out of the Republican Party. He's, he, he sucked our winning percentage out of the Republican Party. He's taken everything from us, and it is our turn to take it back. 
right? It's our turn to win elections based on the policies that we think we're better on. This is the prime spot for us to take Joe Biden to the woodshed and call him out for not running the border right, not protecting our communities, not putting our best foot forward internationally. These are our moments in time. But if we make this about the three ring circus of Donald Trump, we will lose, lose and lose again. Bakar, you have a unique perspective all the way up there um, on this, not only as a lawyer, but as a, I would say, a recovering politician. Amen to that. Um, do you see in the Georgia indictment, do you see it, do you see it as more as more danger for Donald Trump legally, politically, either, neither? I think it's more danger for Donald Trump. There are a few reasons why. One, I think that you see the behavior, the overt acts that Fani out, that laid out. Uh, the number of people, co-conspirators, even those unindicted, I believe there are 30 unindicted co-conspirators right. in this as well. Um, this is truly a granular complaint that they spent months putting together, and you can see the effort and time that they used in putting this together. Um, also, it's a jury pool that he is not going to be very fond of. It's a Fulton County jury pool. Uh, I don't think he's going to have any issues with fairness, but he is going to go in and have to deal with uh, a jury pool of his peers in Georgia, and he does not want to be in Atlanta, I can tell you that much. Also, on the back end, there's no mechanism whereby Brian Kemp can pardon him, right. as we already know. He doesn't have the ability, if he wins the election, say, and, and gets found guilty in D.C. Or, or Miami, he can pardon himself. So I, I just feel like this is going to be a very, very uncomfortable situation. And last thing I'll mention is Donald Trump doesn't deal with black women very well. I've mentioned mm. that a few times over on, on, the sh on the network. You know, he's had trouble with Yamiche. He's had trouble with our own Abby Phillip. Abby. Um, and now he's going up against Fani. And I think that uh, the way that she has postured herself and shown that she is not going to back down from him and shown that this isn't a partisan battle, this is a fight of right and wrong and accountability, is something that Donald Trump's probably not going to take very well. Yeah, so again, amazing stuff. I mean, just openly admitting the quiet part out loud that everybody knows, which is that this whole process is rigged, okay? Coming from Democrats and Republicans, let's keep it honest with you. But what this uh, CNN lawyer is saying here is that, well, uh, because Fulton County is mostly black, right, and Democrats, uh, because you have a black woman DA, um, hey, Trump's going to have some problems. He's going to have some issues because apparently Trump doesn't deal well with black women. Or, I mean, the truth is that black women just don't deal well with Trump. I mean, look at what's going on between the woke judge in the uh, D.C. trial, um, the case that's bought by Jack Smith against Trump. She's pretending that she's scared of Trump, right? She's running around, going to the bathroom with security and stuff like that, pretending that she's in some type of danger or there's some imminent threat against her, right, from Trump. Uh, I, I don't think black women deal well with Trump. I don't think it's the other way around. I think Trump doesn't really have a problem with black women. But what you're saying is that there is overt bias against Trump coming from black women. And this is something that is repeated on TV a lot, which they openly say that, hey, <laughs> uh, Trump's going to experience the so-called systemic racism that these people claim that they're against, okay, because the judge is black or the DA is black or whatever, it's specifically also a black woman, oh yeah, Trump's going to have issues, right, they're saying the quiet part out loud, okay, uh, racism, systemic racism being done against Trump, right? We're all the woke revolutionaries that usually boohoo, whine, and cry about this stuff. I guess it's okay when it's being done against the white man, right? I, I'm assuming that's the case. And then you have the former uh, lieutenant governor of Georgia that went on CNN and also said another quiet part out loud, which is that, hey, um, Republicans, we're, we're rooting for this, right? Republicans, the establishment Republicans are rooting to get rid of Trump. They want to get rid of Trump. This guy is pretending that Trump is a problem for Republicans when, no, 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 Democrats are basically creating this problem because they're bringing these indictments against Trump and the Republican Party is weak by not fighting back against what is obviously political persecution of the former president of the United States for doing something that uh, Stacey Abrams did, that Hillary Clinton did, the Democrats have done. And if these Republicans actually had some cojones, maybe, just maybe, they should be going out to Stacey Abrams, right? That's how weak the Republican Party is, okay? Democrats will never go out to one of their own for this type of stuff, but Republicans will gladly go out to one of their own for this type of stuff while ignoring Democrats and what they did that allegedly, basically, it's the same thing. It's really kind of ridiculous, right? It just shows you that, um, again, this whole process is rigged, and the rigging is not just done by Democrats. It's also being done by Republicans as well, too. 
okay which is the saddest part about this that's the saddest part and i think that these republicans who are emboldening democrats are in for a rude awakening because democrats are not just going to stop with trump they're going to do this with any republican okay because what's going to happen if trump wins or a republican wins in 2024 they're going to claim that the election was rigged, that the election was stolen, okay? And Republicans are going to do what? Nothing. They're going to sit there and Twitter their thugs and say, oh, the Democrats are wrong, blah, blah, blah. But they're not going to bring any indictments against Democrats. They're not going to punish Democrats at all. Uh, I don't have much faith that they're actually really going to try to impeach Joe Biden, right? But what will happen is that if a Republican dare challenges the election if Joe Biden wins, uh, they're going to go after Republicans, OK, they're going to continue to use these newfound powers against Republicans because at, at the end of the day, all Democrats care about is uh, accumulating power and winning elections. That's all they care about. And Republicans are going to suffer from allowing the Democrats to weaponize the government against Trump just because they don't like Trump. Again, it's ridiculous. But ultimately, at the end of the day. Uh, this is going to help Trump. I think that Trump's poll numbers are going to shoot up. This is basically guaranteeing a win in the primary for Trump. And in my opinion, I think it helps him out in general election as well, too, because I think a lot of people are seeing how hard they're going after Trump. And a lot of people are probably not liking this type of overt political uh, persecution that is going on in this country, especially when um, they're not bringing anything against Biden, who obviously clearly is selling out this country with him and his son and also when it comes to the classified documents case still haven't heard anything uh from uh washington on that okay the doj on that haven't heard anything about that probably won't bring anything against biden until after the 2024 election which again is them rigging a process people are seeing just how overtly rigged this whole thing is and i don't think that this is going to have the effect that democrats believe that it will I do believe that this is going to backfire. I think that this does nothing but help Trump at this point. He just actually needs to win, right? Because if he doesn't win at this point, considering all the charges that have been brought against him, they're going to find him guilty on at least one, so it seems, okay? And if that's the case, then he, he probably will be put in jail. So he, he has to win, right? At this point, is do or die for Trump. And, you know, his back against the wall, but Trump performs at his best when his back is against the wall, right? Just like in 2016, I think we're going to see that situation repeated over again next year. And it's going to be absolutely hilarious to see the meltdown from the Democrats in the deep state if Trump wins. And what's going to be even more hilarious is a vengeful Trump going after Democrats for their crimes. Um, and again, at that point, they won't be able to boohoo on and cry about it because, again, this is what they did to Trump, right? Go after their political enemies. At, at this point, Trump should do the same, except Democrats have actually committed real crimes against this country that they should face prosecution for. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.